Well, hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to ZBrush Live. And um, apologies for having this kind of be out of sequence, but I had to kind of shift Fridays around. So uh, I will be doing these every other Friday, starting this Friday. So this Friday on, next Friday off, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm in the schedule, so you guys can see me there. Uh, like uh, every time, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you have questions, you can ask questions during the stream or uh, you can also um, put them in the comments if you're watching this after it is live and we will do our best to answer your questions. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's do a quick sound and video check. Everybody can hear me okay. I see there are some people on YouTube. Hey, Batcat, how's it going? And uh, Dorima Motion Graphics, thank you very much. Um, looks like there's a few of you online, so hopefully somebody will get back to me and let me know. Um, it might be a little bit choppy at the start, but it kind of uh, settles in after a while. I check my speed, everything should be fine. Uh, we uh, did a little bit of work on the settings last time, so we should be uh, doing A-OK. -okay. All right, so uh, if you guys can let me know that you can hear me OK and you can see my screen, we can get started. Uh, we are working on this uh, mech, which basically is a inspiration from this artificially uh, artificial intelligence uh, generated image that uh, is basically pointing at my artwork. So it's kind of like a regurgitated, reiterated, uh, re I don't know what the best um, way to describe it is, but it's some sort of a uh, kind of a meta iteration of uh, of something that I uh, that I did before. Okay, so I still don't hear anybody saying that you can hear me. Okay, uh, looks like we have some people on Twitch. We have some people on um, on YouTube. If you guys could let me know, that would be awesome. In the meantime, I'll just kind of do a little bit of work on these things that I can see here. Um, and yeah, if somebody could uh, chime in about the audio, that would be awesome. All right, I'm kind of not getting any uh, anything in chat. Oh. Uh, yeah, the best way to let me know if you can hear me okay and see my screen is via chat. So I don't see anything on the chat. Uh, let me just type something in. All right. Oh, let's see. Still, I'm not getting anything. I wonder if there's a little bit of a delay. Um, okay, Dorima, thank you. You're saying it's cool. Can you hear me okay, Dorima? Can you see my screen fine? And I hope I'm saying uh, your name correctly. Is it Dorema or Dorima? Uh, okay, good, awesome. So we're good on YouTube. And um, if anybody on Twitch can chime in, that would be great too. All right, so um, here we go. We are um, just gonna continue working on this. I unfortunately didn't have much time to do anything else. Uh, okay, good bad cat, thank you very much as well. Um, and I didn't really have much time to work on it um, over the break. So I'm just going to be continuing pretty much from where we left it off last time. And uh, just going in here and defining the major uh, forms getting that gesture right. I'm still working in symmetry. But we'll be breaking it at some point uh, soon. Um, when it's time. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to make these into uh, different shapes. So I think we did a little bit of work on the hull last time. And this time we're going to be working on the arms a little bit, getting them to be a little bit more refined. So I think we worked on these three. I don't know if we worked on this one. Let's see. Nope, not yet. 
So let's divide it a couple of times. With, let's see. I'm going to do something real quick here. I might need to restart ZBrush, so bear with me. Um, let me do a quick save on this. Actually, let me just, yeah, let me do a quick save. And I'm going to see if I can make the text size a little bit smaller so uh, we can um, get a little bit more on the screen here. So let me see if I can do that. Um, all right, so here I'm going to go to my um, custom UI. No, it's under interface, UI, and button size. I wonder if I can make this in, at 40, if it will work. Let's try that. Yeah, I need to restart ZBrush, which is fine. I think that might be a good idea. All right, with our arms to the sun, okay, thanks, uh, thank you very much. All right, so all the, the kind of the um, audio check is coming in fine. Thank you, everybody. And um, also, um, if you guys have any questions, this would be a good time to ask it while I'm just restarting ZBrush. I just did that just so the icon size would be a little bit smaller, not much, but we might get uh, to see a little bit more on the screen. Okay. Um, For ZBrush to restart, did it restart on another screen? Nope, it's still coming up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I've got a bunch of people on YouTube saying the audio is fine. That's great. Um, nobody on Twitch, nobody on Facebook is chiming in, but I'm assuming more people will chime in later. Also, since this is not... Um, happening normally, maybe some people did not get the, uh, um, get the, uh, the message of when um, this was going to be at. So uh, maybe some people are, were thinking it's gonna be next Friday. Uh, I apologize about that, but you'll always be able to see the, um, you'll always get to see the um, recording and uh, get on the new schedule. All right, so let's just load this in. Yeah, the icons are a little bit smaller, so we have a little bit more screen uh, screen real estate to work with things. And here we go. Ah, oh, I saved the undo steps. Wow, that's why it's taking so long. All right, let me turn that off as soon as we get to where we're getting to. Uh, there shouldn't be that many. Oh man, this one's 182. Saving the undo steps is cool, uh, but it's not necessary. Oh man, this one has 209. It's kind of neat to see an inventory of how many <laughs> different uh, things you've done to all the different uh, sub-tools. Oh man, okay. I didn't realize this was gonna take this long, <laughs> otherwise I would have uh, kept the interface at what it was. So I guess this would be a good time to ask any, um, chat seems to be four to five minutes behind. Is that the case? Um, that's fine. Um, you guys can just ask me questions. I'll answer them and I'll stay five minutes after just to make sure we are on time. Okay, so let me just make this document size happening to, um, and then document double and then half there's the Mac okay cool and then uh, let me just go ahead and load in the image just so we have it uh, texture import this guy and let's pop it on to our UI so we can see it Oops, maybe move it out of the way a little bit more. Okay, so this is kind of what we're working on right here and um, maybe um, make that part bigger like so. Here we go. All right. 
Yeah, that's pretty odd that the chat is is um, a little bit late, but um, doesn't matter. Let me divide this one more time. And let me get the gesture of it to where I want to be. So yeah, I want this to kind of come down this way. That's fine. And then it's connecting over here. And let's just move these up. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so this piece is kind of, um, I still have to figure out, maybe I'll just create one that goes inside of all of these. Um, and I just have to figure out what to put in between these. Um, I don't want to belabor it too much with very detailed stuff, um, but something has to connect these things up. And uh, so I'm figuring maybe it's some sort of a hinge or some sort of a uh, some sort of kind of a um, kind of a snake-like object that's inside that will manipulate these arms. Uh, usually, it's not good to have. I mean, if you look at our arms, you know, there basically are uh, three different pieces and then the fingers. So here I've got one, two, three. I mean, I'm assuming this is the shoulder, one, two, three as well. And I'm assuming this is the hand, uh, or maybe this is a, a kind of a longer finger. Uh, so I'm always kind of, you know, you always equate things to more uh, being like human shaped so that um, kind of did some work on here, but maybe I don't have symmetry on. Is that the case? No, I do have symmetry. on. All right. So let me just bring up H polish and knock this down a bit. Um, no, it didn't crash. I just rebooted it. So basically in, in ZBrush, if you guys didn't know this, under preferences, there is a under under um, custom UI, I think. No, under interface, under UI, uh, there's the button size and you can change this to be bigger or smaller. And I just changed it from 42 to 40 just so I can get a little bit more um, text on the screen, and more of my icons. And if I hit Alt-Tab to have my menus so I can see more of my menus. Uh, and to do that, um, you, you have to start ZBrush for it to take effect. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, while ZBrush is working. So that's why I had to restart it. So I didn't have a crash. Um, you know, we barely crash ZBrush in these streams. It's, um, I mean, it does happen every once in a while, just like any program. But, um, you know, if you work smart, uh, I think you will not crash ZBrush at all. Right, so I'm just kind of assuming that this is some sort of a, a panel here, and uh, I just have to make sure I'm figuring out kind of the planes of how this is going to be. Uh, so this is kind of hard surface sculpting mostly. So instead of doing the mo it in a modeling way, I'm basically just sculpting it, and then I'll probably um, zero mesh it to get um, the type of geometry that I want. Let me sort these out. I'm getting a really sharp edge over here, which I don't want, but I will get rid of it. Um, let's see, let's knock that down with, um, I think, let's see. I think standard brush will do a good job with that. And then hit it with H polish. All right. Um, all right, Damon, happy Friday to you too. Wow, the number of people watching went up quite a bit. That's amazing. I guess some people just kind of got here late. All right, all right, all right. Again, if you guys have any questions or want to talk about anything, uh, just mention it. So we can uh, either answer the questions or have some topic of conversation. Did anybody see the Avatar um, 2 trailer? Curious if anybody did. Really curious to see what kind of designs they have in this not in this new um, 
in these new series. All right, so that's looking pretty good. spending too much time on this one where I should be focusing more on this one right here all right so this one I think size wise it looks okay and I think I did add some subdivision levels to it but I'm going to delete them and uh, do a little bit of work here I'm gonna add some edge loops just to break it down so it's not just these thin strips. Actually, I did something interesting there. I wonder if that would be a nice feature to have. Is something like this. Uh, yeah, I think I like it. I think I'll keep it. Happy accident there. I'm gonna use slide to bring this in. That's good. And then just rotate it over and I'm going to use the uh, slice brush to our uh, where is it slice curve I'm going to add some edge loops this way now the trick is to do one here but not but have it keep quads so let's see if i can do that i think i can do one here just fine yeah but i'm going to get this thing happening here that's fine i'll just zero mesh it later i'm not going to worry about this right now i'm just going to worry about getting even sized polygons and then add an edge loop over here oops Right, non-symmetrical, that's fine. Mirror, mirror, and weld. Now it is symmetrical, so that should be fine. Is it still on slide? It is. Insert. Okay. All right, let me see if there's anything else I can do to this. Maybe add an edge loop right here and one here. Oops. All right, this is looking okay. And... Um, I wonder if I should chance it now. I will. I'm going to try and zero mesh it now. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. Zero mesh. And what we want to do is we want to detect edges. And same number of polys is fine. Let's see what it will give us. Not bad at all. I think this is good enough. Some funky stuff going on here, but I can fix that before it does it. All right, perfect. That's what we want right here. Let's solo this out and start tweaking this thing. So I'm assuming it's going to come down like this. And see, now I've got a lot more geometry that I'm playing with. So I got to be very careful, or otherwise, I'm going to kind of break the hard surfaceness of it, but I can always kind of fix it later. Um, but I'm assuming as this is getting more kind of extreme uh, to the side here, I can, uh, it could have a little bit more curvature to it than the ones up there. And there's this dip over here that I got to fix. All right. Um, okay, good, good, good. So nobody saw the Avatar preview. I guess it's going to, they're going to be showing it in theaters next week, is what they said. But uh, uh, this context menu right here, is this the one you're talking about, Dorima? Or are you talking about these ones? If you're talking about the circular one, that is a, a Wacom um, menu. And if you watch my previous streams, I go over how uh, I did it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's basically, um, it 
it's basically uh, just a uh, um, here I'll show you it's basically under the welcome tablet properties right here uh, it's the um, on-screen controls is what you choose and then here you have all of these different um, things that you can add. So one of them uh, I've called ZBrush and I've uh, assigned them to a keystroke, right? So each one of these is a keystroke, which is a hotkey I defined. Uh, and if you don't know how to do hotkeys in ZBrush, uh, there are plenty of tutorials on how to do it. So each one of these uh, Pi items is connected to a keystroke. And then I have this 3D mouse, which basically, instead of having the eraser like this one, which is on the top right here, okay, so this one doesn't have an eraser. Instead, it has a third button. So I've got one button, you know, let me see if I can get this closer to the camera. Okay, so I've got one button here, one button here, and then there's this third button. And so what I've done here is on the um, uh, ProPen 3D, which, uh, oops, let me go this way go back on the ProPen 3D um, I've basically mapped this thing to that ZBrush button and then when I press it it just comes up right so and activates that shortcut and just a kind of a fast way for me to um, you know switch between the brushes that I use all the time One of the benefits of using a Wacom tablet, I guess, is that you get to do that. But I'm sure the other vendors, and man, there seem to be, I just checked the other day in a magazine, and there seems to be like three or four of them now. I mean, it used to be just Wacom, um, but now there's Wacom, there's another one um, that a bunch of ex-Wacom people are working at, uh, and then there is... Um, there's two or three others. Uh, do I have different workflows I follow uh, depending on the project? Um, yes and no. I mean, it depends. Like if I'm doing uh, sculpting, like if I have an organic project, I definitely work a little bit differently. And if I have a hard surface project, I work a little bit differently. Uh, but for the most part, no, it's pretty much the same. It's not that different. And I shouldn't say it's the same all the time because it's ever evolving. I'm always evolving the way I work. Uh, like for example, that context menu was not part of my workflow in the, in the first few streams. So if you watch those, you'll see that I don't use that same method. So, um, all right, so this one right here is, is looking okay, but it needs a, a couple of subdivision levels and needs some polishing. Go. Uh, all right. Is it typical to use Final Paint on Dynamesh while still remeshing? You see, um, yeah, uh, Damon. I think um, so. The risk you run with Dynamesh uh, polygons and poly painting, and if you redynamesh it, is you might lose some of that poly paint. So here, let me give you an example. So let's say, we oh, before I forget, let me go ahead and turn Undo History off here. Um, okay, so let's say I've got this one right here. And, um, well, let's just pick this balloon, right? So I've got this balloon right here, and it looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. There it is. And then I'm going to Dynamesh it, right? So here... Geometry and Dynamesh and Dynamesh it, yes. Um, okay, so now, let me hide the other ones. So now this is Dynamesh version of this, right? And I can choose to have this Dynamesh be smaller, right? So right now uh, the Dynamesh is at 128. I can pump this up to, let's say, uh, let's try 512 and then Dynamesh it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, it's still kind of giving me this. Let me try uh, deleting the subdivision lower and then dynamesh it. 
Okay, here we go. All right, so now you can see that this is Dynameshed. I'm going to make it all one polygroup. So now if I poly paint on this, right, I, there aren't that many polygons. So if I choose paint here, and let me fill this with, um, I'll turn off polyframe, fill this with a color. Let's fill this with white, and then I'm going to start painting on it with black. So you can see here, I mean, it is it is showing up, right? But it is kind of got these jagged edges. So if I want kind of something to be sharper, I can uh, go ahead and Dynamesh this at a higher resolution. So I'm going to go to um, try 512 and then Dynamesh it. And so let's see. So it's still kind of big chunks here, but let me go even further than that. Let me go to 1024 and Dynamesh it. Um, Okay, it's still kind of keeping it at a lower, uh, I just want more resolution. So uh, I'm going to turn blur off and we dynamesh it at 1024. Let's try 2048. Oops. I think, um, well, I'm going to divide this and then dynamesh it. Let's see if it does a better job. Okay, so now it's going to give me a lot of polygons. So here you can see I've got a lot of really dense polygons, and uh, this is a bit too much. I'm going to take it, drop it back down to 1024, redynamesh it. Uh, I think the problem is I didn't move it before I did that. So 1024 is good. Um, maybe now I can drop it even down to 512, move it, dynamesh it, uh, or maybe just touch the surface, redynamesh. All right, so I think this is good enough, but you can see it's pretty dense, right? So now if I poly paint it, it's a whole different story where I'm getting some really kind of clean edges, right? Which is great, but then if I redynamesh this at a lower resolution, so let's say now I drop it back to 256 and redynamesh, I'm going to lose some of that. Um, you can see here the polygons are a little bit bigger. Right, but if I um, redynamesh at a lower res, I'm going to start losing. Let me try doing this real quick. Um, and redynamesh it. Now you can see how I, I kind of started losing some of those edges that I had. And if I even go less, if I go to 128 and redynamesh. I lose a lot more of it. And even if I go back up now, like even if I go back up to, um, let's say 1024 uh, and redynamesh it, you can see that I still will not get that back. So I guess the advice is that if you are going to um, poly paint and dynamesh, make sure that you don't poly paint until you've got the highest resolution of what you, you are working on. And if you want to get to that resolution, stick to it. Because if you go down or up in uh, Dynamesh uh, resolution, you are going to lose your um, you're going to lose what you what you were working on. All right, so here we go. Let's switch the color back to white here, and let's go back to our mech. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, Um, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you're talking about Avatar, uh, How J. Howley, 2018. Um, yeah. Uh, Pexal, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Uh, thanks for asking. And let's see. Let's go back to here. And let's go to this piece and start to work on it. So... So again, these are pretty low resolution pieces, as you can see. Okay, so this is still kind of uh, two pieces together. I'm going to separate them out. Uh, delete hidden. And oh, I didn't want to delete the hidden. Shoot. All right, no worries. Easily uh, fixed. We'll just duplicate this one. And move it over here. And uh, do that. OK. Quick 
recovery there and then let's start moving this around doesn't really matter because it's a, it, again it's a very 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 simple geometry so it's easy to kind of reconfigure I didn't lose a lot of work I don't need to uh, get it back all right um, so uh, you have a hue on yeah yeah that's another one that I saw I, I didn't know about them um, so uh, yeah I mean if it uh, if it works well then awesome I mean a lot of times you know if you don't have a good tablet um, you'll find out about it pretty fast um, but I think for the most part um, I'm glad there is more competition competition is always good for the consumer I've used Wacom tablets forever like since the 90s so um, and uh, I have a lot of them like I have some older models kind of have a little museum of Wacom tablets in my house uh, I never uh, you know I have a Cintiq um, mobile pro which basically is on the screen and I use that when I'm out uh, doing work at uh, at location on location um, but I don't have a Cintiq at home I don't have one of those big Cintiqs that a lot of artists have and uh, and I would prefer actually not to. I prefer using a tablet to uh, Cintiq. But I know some artists just cannot uh, work without one and they love it. So um, I don't know, maybe I'll get one one of these days, but for now I've got other priorities. All right, so this arm is looking okay. I'm kind of liking this little bit of a lip over here. All right, so let's kind of divide this up and start giving it some shape. Add an edge loop over here. And add, I'm gonna just do this a little bit faster. Add multiple edge loops. And about there, that's good. And then about there, that's good as well. Right, and then let's go back to single edge loop. Maybe pop one here. No, I don't need one there. Let me solo this out. See what's going on elsewhere. I think it's all it's all good. What I'm trying to do here is get get evenly spaced. Uh, this looks very uh, uh, Chris Foss. This these this color uh, area here. Um, amazing artist, by the way. Jeez, such a big influence. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so let's give it a, another couple of subdivision levels. Oops, not soft ones. Um, go. And let's see if we can establish some sort of a interesting hard surface form on this guy. Can just give me a second here to respond to this. So sorry about this, but it's kind of important. All right, um, let's see. Um, all right. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, there's quite a few people watching, but not usually as many as I get. And I think that's because it's kind of on an off Friday. So people watched me last Friday probably think I'm going to be on next Friday. And I'm sorry about that, but I had to kind of change my schedule. But this is going to be the one I'm going to stick to for a while. So it's going to be uh, not next Friday, but the Friday after, and then not the Friday after that, and then so on and so forth. And of course, the best way to find out is if you go to uh, ZBrush Live here and go to the schedule, uh, the calendar, um, you get the. Um, jump to it. Come on. There we go. 
so you can see the dates here I don't know if uh, if they've added mine yet but uh, it will be here so this will basically show you the uh, the dates I'll be on oh no they're here so I'm on May 13th and I am on uh, let's see yep on May 27th so 13th and 27th are the next times I will be on and I probably will be on uh, and next month is going to be uh, I'm gonna do my best to do it next month but next month I will be on uh, uh, my own twitch channel as well so keep an ear out for that uh, if you guys want to find out more about it, the best thing to do is to um, to subscribe to me on Twitch, uh, and it's Kermico, just like everything else. Um, I'll probably be talking about, I don't know if I'll be do doing it before the next one I do on ZBrush Live, but... Um, I will probably be talking about it on, on the ZBrush Live uh, channel. And so keep out an eye for that. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna take this whole um, thing here and create the inside part. Maybe I should have done that before, but I can always do it now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this entire folder and um, I'm going to um, use, um, Subtool Master, uh, right here, Subtool Master, and I'm going to uh, clone that folder. Okay, so it basically just creates a whole new um, thing here with that folder in there and uh, it's basically just these two arms and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to merge them together uh, merge down okay and continue to do that so I basically just have one piece and I did have it all as one piece before and what I'm going to do here is uh, select, is mirroring on, it is. Uh, I'm going to select just half of this, delete the other half. And, um, and what I'm going to do is create like the inside part of that arm. A and to do that, I'm just gonna dynamesh this whole thing uh, together. Uh, let's see if it does it all in one piece. Uh, think it's close enough let's see so if I just do yeah here we go this is exactly what I want so now it's just one piece and I'm going to copy this go back over here and paste it into that folder okay so now it is kind of thicker and what I want to do is deflate it so here I'm going to go ahead and go to deformation and inflate will go will make it fatter but if you go the other direction it will deflate it and so now it's going to go inside of the um, inside of the arm and that's kind of the thing that is going that's holding it together so this is like some sort of you know uh, material that uh, is flexible and uh, keeps the arm kind of functioning together Let's see, I got a bunch of questions here. I'm gonna mirror and weld that so we get it on the other side too. And let me turn transparency on just to see where it is. It is exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so um, Damon, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I try to do my best. And um, uh, is there a start to finish model? Yeah, there is. So basically, um, Pexol, um, if you go to, um, so there's, you know, I've done, so this is season six, is it season six or five? Uh, I think it's season, um, and I just call them seasons just to kind of make life easier. So this one is season six. Uh, so, um, and then there's episodes, right? So this is season six, episode five, right? This one. But um, if you want to see previous ones, uh, and each season is one project. 
Uh, this season I was going to do multiple projects, but this one seems to be work, you know, uh, it seems to be coming along nicely. So I'm going to stick to it until it gets done. Uh, and if it gets done sooner, I'll just start another season. But basically, if you go to presenters here, so if you go to pixelogic.com slash ZBrush Live uh, and then go to presenters and find me in this list, uh, which I should be a little closer to the top right here. And if you click on me, um, you can scroll down and it will show you all of the different uh, projects that I've worked on and they are in sequence. Eventually, this is going to have them all in one uh, in one series. So here you can see this is episode one of season four, episode two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to twelve. So season four was twelve episodes, and it's just making this mech, and we start from from the beginning, right? So for this one, uh, I think the best thing to do is to go to Pixelogic's YouTube channel. That's another way way to watch these. Um, so here, uh, under, uh, let me get to it. So if you go to youtube.com slash C slash Pixelogic ZBrush, or just look for Z, uh, the ZBrush channel. Uh, if you go to videos right here, uh, they, you can see they are, uh, sequentially listed. Okay. So here's the last one that we did. And then there was one before that. So if you scroll down, you can see, I mean, if you look for my name, if you just do a search for, or just do search for Kermico if you don't remember my name, um, you can see them all listed here. And uh, you can, you know, they're all listed by season and episode, so you can find them and watch them in sequence. So yeah, I basically, um, there's a lot of people that stream on here that do a project every stream, uh, but I kind of continue my projects and, um, and have them, um, I just noticed this, and have them kind of sequentially, um, you know, start to finish. And it's not, you know, completely finished. Like I always do some more work. Uh, right now I'm doing a lot of work on, um, um, on that mech we worked on in uh, season four, the one that I just showed you. I'm doing some extra work on it and I'm going to be posting some renders on my website. Which by the way, I don't know if I, I think I talked about it last time, but I have a new website uh, finally done uh, here. Kermaco.com, K-E-R-M-A-C-O.com. And if you go there, you can see uh, a lot of my work. And uh, this new site has some new work that wasn't on the old one. Um, and you can all find them all here. Um, and uh, also, there's some uh, good stuff on my blog. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, the latest blog entry I have is uh, some of my um, newer AI work. Pardon me. So you can see all these AI images from my AI work. And these are all uh, things that I'm going to use as reference to do future work. So uh, what's interesting about this is that it basically um, is AI generated images based on my existing work, but generating new images, which gives me new ideas. And then I can take those new ideas and generate new work and then maybe um, get the AI to look at that and just continue to do that uh, as many times as I can uh, so that um, I can get into some really interesting type of designs that uh, otherwise would uh, not have occurred to me. So it's basically just happy accidents happening again and again and again. And that's kind of how I feel like I can st stay ahead of the AI is that um, I can use the AI just like it uses my work. And uh, yeah, and uh, just kind of generate imagery uh, or generate models based on what the AI produces. Of course, the AI works a lot faster than I do, but uh, I think I still have an edge in certain areas. Okay, um, right, no questions. I can just continue to work here. How are we doing on time? We're doing great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so I got that inside uh, piece going. And let me turn transparency off. Get a little bit of penetration over here. Excuse me. 
Just want to make sure it doesn't uh, pound it out. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm probably gonna be fixing these things later on. Okay, so I'm not really worrying about adding uh, secondary or tertiary details onto here uh, just yet, but I will be at some point, and I think this is good for now. Um, I'll have to figure something out here for this um, appendage, this hand. I don't know if it's gonna be some sort of a claw or if it's gonna be some sort of a you know like maybe this is just the whole thing and it just kind of you know captures whatever it is uh, going to pick up. Uh, and then same thing with this one. So basically these three over here are for grabbing stuff. And then if this lands, this is the legs that this thing will walk on. Um, so yeah. All right, let's see. Do something real quick here. All right. So Pex saw Pex sale, I guess. Pex Pex sale. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Kind of thinking of this one right here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know just so I don't. Um, have the same problem as before. I'm going to do this now, where I'm just going to go and hand, go ahead and subtool, and I'm going to put this in a folder. Uh, I'm going to say arm arms two, and I'm going to duplicate this and dynamesh it. All right. So now I have both of these. done and then I can just work on the exterior one and for the exterior one I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into different pieces uh, let's see what just the automatic split does split to parts okay and um, I think what that's going to do is split it to yeah exactly what I thought but that's fine what I'm going to do here is just um, hide everything else and just show this folder. And I probably will use the views, the, these V1, V2, V3 things in ZBrush just to kind of isolate these as I move forward. At some point I stop my work and I organize my information um, just so I get, um, so this last one I don't want. So basically, all, each one of these is its own separate piece, which is not what I wanted. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, delete which one is on? Just delete these. Um, turn off symmetry and delete one side nope. delete island this one oh that's not gonna work is it that's fine I can just do it this way then delete okay and um, this one And delete as well. Let's do OK so we don't have to approve it every single time. And I'm hoping that, yep, delete this one, delete this one, delete, and delete as well. OK, so I just have one side of these things, which is what I wanted. And, um, and the reason why I did that is because now I can just mirror and weld all of them and get both sides. So mirror and weld. Aaron Weld. There's probably a smarter way of doing this. 
but this isn't too painful. Which one is the one? This one, all right, very well as well. Okay, all right, so now I just basically have all these pieces separated out like that. And let's bring this guy, everything else back and see where they are in context. I got these nice colored versions of these balloons too. Forgot about those. Where are they? Yeah, we don't need these and we don't need these. All right. By the way, this is there's a guy there just to kind of show the uh, approximate size of this um, of this thing. So I'm assuming there's like maybe one or two, maybe three drivers in here sitting down. Um, hey, Strawberry King, how's it going, man? Uh, for creating interesting 3D textures and patterns in ZBrush in a similar style as Grasshopper for right now. Um, yes and no. I mean, Grasshopper is, is kind of more prog programmatic, so there's a lot of... Um, there's, a, there's a lot of... Um, um, you know, I mean, you have to really kind of know the math behind it. I'm not a grasshopper user. I might be wrong. Uh, I don't want to assume that that's what it is. But from what I've seen, uh, that's what you kind of have to do in grasshopper. However, you can make some really interesting, um, you can definitely make some really interesting uh, geometric type of uh, shapes in ZBrush. And I've done quite a few myself. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I have not added those to my website just yet. Um, but let me see if I can, uh, let me see something here. I don't know if I have blog entries maybe that have them. So let me just go to my art station here. And uh, one of the things that I like about uh, my art station, uh, let me look myself up, let's see if this works. Uh, yep, here we go. And let me just go to my page. Um, and go to my blog and the thing I like about this blog and eventually I want my web page to kind of show my blog this way I'm just working on it but let me see if I have a blog entry with some of them oh yeah here we go all right so these are all generated in ZBrush so these are all kind of interesting geometric type of shapes all generated in ZBrush rendered in Keyshot this is ancient I mean I did these a long long time ago so this is one set of them and there's more um, that I've done uh, but I don't know if I've got a blog entry I don't I do a lot of fractal type of stuff too every once in a while uh, so here's some fractal stuff and again all these are in my blog but um, yeah I mean these are the kinds of images that I uh, do uh, but but ZBrush can definitely be used I mean there's there's a lot of really interesting tools in ZBrush uh, to do the um, the kind of um, uh, 3D textures or or kind of 3D um, I don't know what the name of I don't know what kind of a, a good name for that is but uh, to do that kind of uh, to do that kind of uh, work um, abstract I guess abstract geometry things like that okay so let me go ahead and uh, turn dynamic on here and turn on Q grid just to kind of get a little bit of that interesting edge to it yep but yeah I mean I you know grasshopper is kind of interesting it's kind of weird because Rhino is kind of more of a cat tool and I don't know Rhino at all um, it's one program that I've you know I thought it was interesting when I first started um, doing CG stuff uh, but I never really uh, spent the time and learned it. There's so many great programs. I mean, there's only so so much time during the day. I wish I could learn all of them. Um, Strawberry King, you're getting a lot of buffering. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I basically went to a new ISP and um, it doesn't have the same bandwidth as my old one, unfortunately. 
Uh, so I am getting a little bit of buffering, but it seems the recordings are fine. Um, but let me check the speed here real quick. Let me do a quick speed test to see if that's degraded. But eventually I'll be back to having a faster internet. But right now it seems it seems pretty fast. I've got one... Uh, Wow, it's really fast. I've got about 180, almost 200 up, which is great. But the down is the, or, or I'm sorry, that's that's down. And then the up is pretty fast. No, I'm getting amazing speeds. So um, almost as fast as what I had before. So um, yeah, but it's interesting to know if, if it's buffering for anybody else, let me know. Um, I can adjust some settings. But um, but I think I'm going to stick with this ISP for a while until um, I get a better um, a better one. Right now I have a choice of only two, and one of them I'm not very happy with. But this one uh, I think is getting better and better every time I work. All right, so there's that. And this one is using an amazing technology that I want to support. Uh, I think this is the way to go. When I was in Japan, this was kind of the same technology they had there, and I want that to happen here too. So I'd rather support these guys and have them develop their technology rather than uh, the other guys who have this aging technology and they just keep raising the prices and the quality gets worse. All right. Um, Pack sale, you were saying something? Yes, I, and then nothing. All right. So here I'm just kind of getting this to be the shape that it needs. And again, this is all kind of very. Um, I'm going to hide the balloons. They're awesome looking, but um, they don't need to be here. They kind of are obstructing what I'm doing. And I'm going to hide the dude too for now. All right. And now the part I'm working on is this one over here. Uh, let me make this a little bit thinner. All right. So I want to make sure I didn't like make it too scrawny. Oh, it is too scrawny. All right, I'll just use the shift key. Actually, let me um, get this to be dynameshed at a smaller size. Polygons. Uh, where are you? Here you are. And let's go to 512. And we dynamesh it. Oops. There we go. That's better. And then I can just kind of shrink it down using shift. And yep, that's much better. And again, most of this isn't going to be seen. And I might just cut the, the pieces off later on. But basically, these are all going to be inside of, um, you know, I'm just going to see them in between the two the pieces here. All right, shrink this down. That's good enough. I don't want to do too much work because I'm probably going to be moving these things. All right, so this one I think is the one I worked on. Yep, and it's looking okay. And again, I'm just using, I'm working on very few polys here um, so I can make big gestural changes to it at this point and still um, not have to deal with too much geometry. All right, so let's move on to these pieces and uh, symmetry on. Yep. Why isn't it going over to them? There it is. Okay. And I'm going to move these out just a little bit like that. That looks good. And these pieces over here. Same 
this lane. Local symmetry. And again, I'm just making some minor, minor adjustments to these and moving them into position. Like so. Again, not too much change from what I had before, but just enough to um, get it to work. So see here, I've made so much of a change that the thing underneath is not working out anymore, but that's okay. I can always move that into place. Again, the only thing that's going to show of these things is the part that's um, in between these pieces. Yeah, I have to do some research on, on technology that could be inside these things and see if I can match it. That works. It's still good. What's nice is if it's, you know, if the resolution is this low, you can even use the move brush to kind of adjust it instead of using the gizmo. this back end a bit. I um, could hide the arm that's on top, but I, I'm keeping it there just because uh, I kind of want to see how these all look together. I really like this kind of top silhouette almost looks like some sort of an octopus. Very cool. And for the name of this mech, I need to look up Octopi and maybe give it some octopus name. I think that's a good um, animal spirit for it. Any questions? No questions. How's the buffering going, guys? Uh, I would appreciate you guys letting me know um, if it's if it's better or worse. Because it might be buffering for a while, but then it kind of fixes itself. It's so weird. All right, Damon. Sure. Um. Well, we're all almost at the same number we usually have, so that's good. I guess maybe people kind of tuned in now. Somebody was asking me something about my Twitch channel. Let me see here. Um, no, yeah, it's not on here. If I do my, uh, if I do this on Twitch, I probably won't be simul, simul doing it, meaning I will b basically just do it on Twitch, but then I will upload the recording onto YouTube like the following day. So I'll just be streaming on Twitch. 
And I wonder if that's going to make the bandwidth a little bit better. I don't know. To be seen. Pe Pexil, what were you saying? Me too for what? For buffering or for um, insightfulness? Um, all right, here we go. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really liking how this thing's turning out. You know, I would have never thought to do something like this if it if the AI hadn't generated this image. So thank you, AI. All right, so this one's kind of an interesting arm. I'm going to switch to this one for a while. The problem with making something with a lot of arms and legs is you got to <laughs> work with a lot of arms and legs. And here, I don't know if I need this one right here. Switch to select. Let me do it this way. Delete hidden. Yeah, I'm going to kind of make my life easier there and remove ones that I don't think are that useful. Uh, another thing that's nice here is I'm going to turn on topological so I'm just basically going to be working on whatever is under my brush. Uh, that will make life easier. I'm going to sp speed this up a bit so we can get some sort of interesting result today. And uh, you know sometimes I just kind of take the time to do things just to kind of show people that um, you know things take time. I also don't need these ones. for now um, but yeah things take time um, and when you see the finished image you're like wow this is great but um, now whenever you're looking at anything on ArtStation and you think it's good um, always look at the details and think about the fact that somebody had to do those details like if you're doing a human you got to do 10 to uh, fingers and uh, if they're not wearing shoes 10 toes uh, so that's 10 fingers you got to pose. That's 10 th fingers you got to put in place. Um, two hands, two arms, two shoulders. So uh, there's a lot of different pieces that you got to work with. Uh, okay. Um, ah, here we go. Damon has a nice uh, trick. He says he's moving the slider back uh, and it's stopping the lag. Awesome. It's better than last time, that's great. Yeah, I've got a, a better uh, ping than last time too. So again, it's the ISP uh, and uh, they're, they're getting better uh, as well. So that's good. But you guys should use um, Damon's trick, which basically he's moving the slider back and that's uh, preventing uh, the lag. Speaking of lag, <clears throat> I was telling my uh, I was talking to my son about uh, online gaming the other day. I uh, you know um, I was telling him what an interesting thing it was, and I don't know how my, how, how old everybody is that's uh, tuning in here, but I remember um, the time where. Um, you know, I mean, computer games where you, you basically went and bought a uh, games on floppies or bought them on CDs. And I mean, I remember CDs were a big deal, so you could have a lot more content on there. And uh, I think even before CDs, uh, you know, when I got, I think I got Doom on a disc. Uh, not Doom, sorry. Uh, what's it called? Castle Wolfenstein. Uh, what is it? Uh, Wolfenstein 3D. And uh, first of all, that was in 3D. I mean, if you guys see it now, it looks so bad. Um, but that was good. But then I think it was either Doom, or, yeah, I think it was either Doom or Quake. One of the two, I think it was Doom, where they had um, multiplayer. But it wasn't like there was a server you could join or anything like that. You basically had to modem into another player. And it was just two players. And you modemed into another player and, uh, you know, all this, you know, you got to set th things up. And we had these like 200 th or 300 baud modems, which 
I think by the time uh, the games came out, it was 1,200 or 2,400 baud. I don't remember. But these things that you tied up to your phone line and then, and then you had to call the person or they called you. And it took a long time to game, get a game set up. But, um, uh, you know, and then I remember like the first time where I actually saw another person online, like another player. Uh, which is something everybody takes for granted now. But imagine when you see the an avatar of uh, an, a game, a, you know, a game uh, person, you know, online for the first time. That was a trip. Like you just uh, before then, you just play, you know, NPCs. You play characters that are in the computer that do repetitive stuff. But all of a sudden, you're playing against a human, uh, manifesting themselves in some sort of an avatar form. That was really amazing. Like, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, there was a world before that and now there's a world after that. But of course, now you get like multiplayer games with hundreds of players and you know, all sorts of uh, fun things happening. So this all happened in a very short period of time. <clears throat> if you look at history, uh, it, it was pretty amazing. So I'm really kind of curious to see how things shape up in the, the metaverse kind of paradigm. And, um, and what that would look like. Like what's that world like where um, where, you know, uh, there's digital manifestations of people and it could be completely different than their reality. It's kind of like Ready Player One, but um, could be very, very different. And the whole reason why I mentioned that is <laughs> You know, lag, you know, uh, I mean, the kinds of lags we got then were horrible. But we didn't care. We kind of knew the promise of it. So same thing here. I, I don't care about the lag we're getting now because, I mean, eventually you can watch the videos. I'm not worried about that. I just want this technology to be uh, pervasive because it will definitely add a whole new... Uh, a whole new angle to how we uh, connect that has not been available in the US uh, yet. And it can only get better. And I bet you it'll get better a lot faster than it has in the past. <coughs> okay. Uh, all right, so um, Manuel, you're saying buffering is better. I wonder if buffering is different in different countries. Like, I wonder if there is some sort of a, uh, or if it's just everybody's getting it. Um, yeah, maybe you guys can tell me where you are. So, um, Strawberry King, where are you? And um, Damon, I don't know where you are. Manuel, if you guys can tell me what, what country you're in, what continent you're on. Uh, it would be interesting to know that as well because it could be something to do with uh, YouTube sending it out as well. So maybe they're getting it later and sending it out later too. So there's there's a lot of pieces that are making this possible. There's OBS on my end, there's my ISP, but then it's getting to YouTube, it's getting to Twitch, and then they're transmitting it out uh, over their internet lines. So. Uh, I'm just kind of curious as to what is causing all this stuff and if there's anything we can do to make it better for you guys. Uh, what's the name of the AI app that generated this image? Uh, it's um, it's not an it's actually a website. It's a uh, it's called Disco Diffusion. It's uh, it, it's a um, it's a um, um, a open source. Uh, AI program written on top of Google Colab 
And so you need a Google account and you need to log into Google Colab and um, and Disco Diffusion is just basically the program. You go in, you put in some parameters, you type in some text. Actually, you can use images too. I still haven't done that. Uh, I probably will do it this week though. Uh, but you can start out with a seed image and then, uh, or you can start out with some text. And then you just wait a while and uh, it just generates the image for you in different stages. It's pretty wild. Um, Okay, so bad cat, you're saying buffering is better for you? Yeah, I, I, I you know, it's it's going to change. I think that's one of the things is that it's variable. It's not consistent. All right. His legs are starting to look better. I don't know if I need these to be all uh, kind of different polygroups like this. So what I'm going to do is auto group them. Uh, where are you? Polygroups and auto groups. And mirror and weld, so they're the same on both sides. Ooh, kind of like the other side better. Here we go. Kind of like the way these are flowing. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to duplicate this guy as well. Uh, let me put it in a folder. And these are the legs. And duplicate that and dynamesh it. All right. It did glue them together, but I think I could do better than this. So let's inflate this guy, redynamesh, here we go. Yep, that looks good for the inside part. Let's turn transparency off. And uh, it's wild that it is inflating it uh, a lot more than I'd like uh, when I dynamesh it, but that's fine. And I kind of like the idea of it being a little bit thicker, uh, like maybe these leg parts here, I could have them be some sort of a ex external fabric. Uh, let's try that. Let's see what that looks like, actually. Instead of it being uh, what this is, just kind of do the Kojima um, method of um, having it all be kind of a, at least, you know, the top part be some sort of a a covered item and I'm saying Kojima but it's not Kojima it's Shinkawa it's his design in Metal Gear Solid uh, where it's kind of some sort of fabric on the outside and maybe that comes all the way down to here but not all the way to the end All right, so uh, are we doing on time? Well, okay, cool. We got plenty of time. And I'm going to go a little bit over today. We'll see how we're doing. Yeah, that kind of looks neat. So it's kind of conforming to the parts inside and I might just have it kind of, you know, I might subdivide this and then shrink it down to uh, kind of act like there are some parts inside, but um, all right, that's pretty cool. And then let's do one for this guy here too. Put it in a folder and this is arms three and duplicate it and dynamesh it there we go and this time it actually is pretty nice just kind of pop it inside like so all right okay so I think we're getting good on on the size here so um, I think the primary forms are coming along pretty nicely. So I'm going to work on this now and get it to work a little bit better. OK, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off symmetry. I'm going to delete half of this. And I am going to um, 
split it to parts. And then, um, where are you? There we go. Where is this one? That is very strange. All right, I don't know what just happened, but let's just do this over again. So there's this part right here, but somehow it's not showing up. All right, no worries. I, oh, maybe this is just like some weird uh, shard or something. I don't know. All right, let's get rid of it. We don't need it. Okay, here we go. We got all these parts now. And um, mirror and weld. Oh, I knew this was going to come back to bite me. Uh, mirror and weld. Okay, and then this one. And this one. Almost getting there. I think this one. Mirror and weld. Yeah, I think maybe that one was a shard that was from the previous piece because they're all here. All the pieces are, are where they need to be. I think this is the last one that I need to. Let me just make it one polygroup here and mirror and weld it. There we go. All right, we're good. All right, so let's just work on this one piece. Uh, okay, so um, all right. Um, thanks, Damon. Yeah, I like them too. Uh, it took a while. Um, yeah, mid 90s, Sean. I think you're right. Um, Marathon by Bungie. Yeah, um, I never played that. Uh, I think the 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 first thing from Bungie that I played was uh, Halo on the first Xbox, which I still have, which is uh, which I thought was such a big deal. But I mean, you look at games now, and uh, that's almost nothing. Um, so Manuel is in San Antonio, Bad Cat is in Atlanta, and Strawberry King is in Norway. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys are all over all over the world. So uh, I'm kind of surprised that you're getting lag in the U.S. Um, I mean, I think Norway would be you know more of a a trek uh, in um, on the internet, but um, but yeah, I mean, I see some other people in the U.S. are getting lag too. Uh, like I said, it's just kind of going to be something we're going to, it's going to get better. Uh, but yeah, my um, my bandwidth is pretty high for what it usually is. Um, all right, and uh, let's do this. So here I'm just kind of blocking out the general shape of this. That's good. I don't like this big sharp piece in the back, so I'm gonna kind of knock it down a bit. All right, that's good. Bring this to the middle. Okay, and let's do a dynamic subdiv on this. And add a Q grid of one, and let's see, coverage is about there, that's good. And I uh, forgot to turn symmetry on to this thing, but no worries, it's on now. Uh, oh, uh, the old man is in Sydney, Australia. Wow. Okay. So I wonder, you know, who's getting uh, a lot of lag, like is getting horrible lag? Like it's unbearable. Anybody getting unbearable lag? All right, we got Wisconsin. Jeez. I don't understand why chat is so delayed. That's what's weird to me. Because it seems like the video is okay, but the chat is what's uh, 
what's being more delayed and I don't understand that at all that looks good This one, this one, and this one right here. Okay, I think we've got this shape pretty much ironed out. Let's move on to the one before. I just want to check it this way. That looks good. All right, move one down. Dynamic subdiv, cube rate of one. Fine. Let's see if we can get this. See, the thing is, once we get this to be uh, where we want it to be, and I don't think I've symmetry on this mu and weld activate symmetry. I don't think we have. Um, I mean, once we get this kind of main shape established will move a lot faster so this might be a little bit tedious and I wanted to do this off camera I just didn't have a chance it's been a really crazy week for me um, work wise so uh, a lot of interesting things happening I feel like we're finally kind of coming out of this pandemic uh, crap that we've been dealing with uh, all this time so now all we need is the war to end and then we might kind of get back to some level of normal planet how crazy is that that we kind of went through this whole pandemic it's so wild it's just crazy there'll be a point where we'll kind of start talking about, you know, just like I was talking about the first online game, uh, we'll be talking about, like, remember when we all had to wear masks and we couldn't go outside and <laughs> we had to do all these stupid things we had to do. I don't know if you guys remember when this thing first started, too. Like, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. Everybody was just freaking out. Um... So, I mean, it was horrible. We still lost a lot of people, but uh, I imagined, you know, when it started, I imagined it would be a lot worse. I'm glad it wasn't. Okay, this is looking good. I wonder if there's other things I can do to make the lag better. Like, I wonder if there's, uh, I mean... One suggestion was to have a lower resolution screen, like 720, but I don't know if um, if that's going to be a good thing. I think 720 is really going to be hurting ZBrush. I think 10, 1080 is going to be fine. I can tweak some more settings uh, if I need to. I'll try some of those settings maybe next time to see if it's any better. But at this point, it's just going to be you know kind of fine tuning. It to work better all right I kind of really like this shape it has a really kind of nice um, feel to it so I think I'm just gonna make it into one poly group and that's good move on to the next one this one right here turn dynamic on get rid of one And let's see what we can see. So here what I'm doing is, if you guys are uh, wondering, uh, I'm just basically, um, you know, I mean, even with this level of subdivisions, uh, which is very low, I, you know, I'm trying to get something that would be feasible as an object. So um, 
trying to get things to be as plainer as they can be. It's kind of one a one piece thing. I'm getting a little bit of a cramp in my hand, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. Uh, let's do a quick save. Uh, this would be a good time to do that and take a tea break. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, Um, <clears throat> Damon, how do you restart it? Um, Disco Diffusion. Um, it should be, uh, you know, there should be a run, there's a run menu, and then you can just, um, here, let me see if I can find it. Um, All right, so here there's a runtime menu, right? So if you go to run and say restart and run all, where is it? Restart and run all right here. Uh, it will do it. Right now I'm not connected, so it's grayed out, but you can do restart and run all and it will just restart the process. Uh, is that what your question was? I'm sorry. I don't know if I understood it correctly. But yeah. Um, I'm kind of feeling bad because I, I haven't done any uh, new AI stuff since my blog post. But I kind of want to try some new things. By the way, I should mention there was there's an artist, uh, let me find him, on Instagram that's doing amazing work with this. And I think from this point forward, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be... Um, just kind of an arms race of, um, so here's my Instagram, by the way, you guys should follow me if you're not. It's so funny, I was hovering around 2000 forever uh, and not breaking 2000, so I was at like uh, 1900 and something or whatever, and then all of a sudden I broke through, so which is great, but um, you, can, you guys could always go in and uh, follow me and uh, you can, um, you know, you can see my new stuff. So I uh, posted a lot of AI stuff for a while, like uh, that was kind of exclusively what I was doing. Um, so this is my last ZBrush thing that I posted, I think, which is, uh, you know, I was kind of trying to do something organic. Um, but um, after that, I just started posting a lot of AI stuff just because it generated pretty quickly. But um, let me see if I can go find this other artist whose work I really like. Um, Hopefully they've done something new or it comes up. Um, I don't remember their name, unfortunately. So actually maybe it's in my search. Yep, yeah. is this it? Yes, okay, so here, it, here he is. Uh, this one, this guy right here, Andrei Ryabovichev, um, is doing some amazing stuff with AI. It's like this one right here is pretty amazing. He did this on Alien Day. And um, I think he's kind of doing the Hieron Hieronymus Bosch thing where he's got like one on each side, kind of cut in half, and then he's got a bigger one in the middle. So he's doing the three panel thing, which is working really well for him. Um, but it's kind of really interesting how, um, and I don't know if he's doing any post-processing. I think he is. I think he is painting on top of it. But this kind of stuff he, that he's doing is really, really cool. Um, so, you know, as far as AI stuff is concerned, I really am, uh, like, look at this one, right? So I, I don't think this inside part is, um, part of the AI generated image. I think he's just doing these things and then, uh, comping them together, uh, to create some really interesting results, which is very, very cool. Uh, so I thought I'd share this with you guys. I'm always, you know, I'm always fascinated with, you know, how, um, new artists can look at these things and, and generate new stuff. And uh, this is a whole new medium now. Uh, and Disco Diffusion has just kind of cracked the door open. I think there'll be other programs coming soon that are even going to be better. So, um, so yeah. Another one of those things where, just like the, the thing I was talking about with gaming, like things are not going to be the same after this is part of it. Um, So now you know we have AI as a whole new kind of dimension, and uh, oops. Yeah, let's turn it. 
symmetry on here and put this together. So yeah, AI is going to be like a whole new um, factor in creating art. And uh, right now it's mostly static stuff. So um, I mean, Disco Diffusion does do animations, but I don't know if you watch the animation. It's not really animation. It's kind of like, you know, um, some sort of a fractal looking thing where it goes into the image and generates something new and kind of zooms in. So it's not like flying around whatever it's generating. It doesn't see it as a 3D object. So um, it kind of creates a dreamlike thing, which is kind of neat, but um, nothing uh, that is um, usable. Same thing with fractals, like fractals, I don't know if you guys have seen fractal animations. They're neat, but you basically are seeing the same thing kind of being regenerated. So generative art is not very conducive to uh, being animated of sorts in, in a useful way, at least not nothing that I've seen, uh, but who knows. I think one of the things um, that, uh, and I'm going to be testing that out too in Cinema 4D, is I think you can bring in fractals and generate uh, geometry out of them. So I'm going to be experimenting with that as well. All right. Uh, so Damon, I hope that answered it. The old man, what document size do I prefer to work in? Um, all right, so uh, a thing about ZBrush is it doesn't really matter. Um, your document size doesn't really matter unless, uh, let's see here, let me turn on symmetry and weld this so it's the same on both sides. So this document size over here is your pixel size. So uh, here, usually what I do is I just work in, um, Whereas a W size is, it will fit your window. So I always kind of create a document that size uh, and work on the uh, model. But then when it comes to rendering, then I basically pump up this document size to be bigger, right? So I go to like 5,000, 5, but that's only when I render, not when I'm working. When I'm working, I usually like it to be um, the window size. So under document, I click on this and it makes it the window size. Now one thing I do here for the stream, since this is low res, is I double the document size. So I do that W size first, and then I double it, and then I do an anti-alias half, and that way it's not as jagged as it usually, uh, it, that it, that then it would be. Uh, and that's just for you guys, so it's more, um, it's less jagged and it's more pleasant to look at. But yeah, I usually, um, when I'm working in, in 4K, which is my native uh, monitor size, uh, I usually just use uh, W size, the window size, as my document size. Hopefully that answers for it. Uh, and height to width, uh, you know, when I'm doing a final comp, uh, then that all depends on where it's going. So if it's going for screen, uh, I usually do 1080p or 4K. Lately it's been more 4K, but I try to do maybe 1080p as a minimum. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, hopefully that answers that question. But if I'm doing it for print, of course, then it has to be a lot more. And I think ZBrush does have a limit to how big your uh, document can be. Um, but if I'm doing it for print, I do it at the max that ZBrush can do and then take it out and then maybe resize it in some sort of a, an application that uh, can resize the image and keep the integrity. I think you can double the size of your image and maintain as much of the integrity of the image as possible. But um, as you uh, go bigger, of course, you're going to be losing some resolution. There are some programs that will kind of try and fill it for you. Uh, I'm sure there's some AI things that they're working on that will do that as well. But that's only for print, and like, you know, print is not as big of a deal anymore. Like even billboards nowadays, uh, here in, in Southern California, I was driving on Sunset Boulevard. 
uh, the other night and I noticed that a lot of the billboards are now big screens so it looks very Blade Runner and the resolution on them is pretty intense so uh, it's getting there I was wondering if like Twitch or YouTube or one of those companies can buy one of those billboards and be broadcasting on them. I mean, it would be distracting for traffic, but could you imagine if this was like being shown at the side of a building? That would be so cool. Uh, all right. Let's see. No new questions. That's always good. How are we doing on time? We're doing great. All right, so let's see where we are now. So we've got all these things kind of done, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think we're, um, did we do these ones? No, we didn't do these ones. Okay, we gotta do these ones, no problem. Maybe I should have done the dynamic subdiv on all these guys beforehand as one, uh, you know, you live and you learn, I guess. But just do these all as one instead of having to do them individually. But that's not a big deal. Um, let's do that. Let's turn symmetry on. It's on already. Good. And uh, here. And you guys might think this is repetitive and unnecessary, but it is totally necessary. Uh, it will definitely make a big difference once we get this thing. Uh, when we, once we start adding finer details and uh, making this thing work but each one of these pieces has to work on its own it, it, it otherwise it won't uh, it won't uh, it won't work as a entire model so yep it might be tedious at the beginning but like I said a lot of stuff is uh, See, it's symmetries on, and let's turn on uh, dynamic subdiv on this cube root of one, coverage of two, and let's make this thing work on its own. So you see here, for example, like if you if you notice, there's an indentation here this way, which I don't want. So again, I'm just fixing a very few polygons to get it exactly the way I want it to be. And each one of these pieces has to work on its own. And um, I mean, I don't, you know, if I was working on a production project, this would be, you know, not an issue if there wasn't going to be a zooming in. If we're going to look at this thing from a, a distance, it wouldn't matter as much. But here, it kind of does. Because I don't know. I don't know what angle I'm going to look at it at. It's just basically a sculpture. Dynamic cube root of one and and also I'm um, doing a lot less focus on this stuff working well. Like if I was just doing this as a design. Uh, object I would make sure that you know there is some sense in the way these are going to work uh, so it would you know be feasible but here I'm just kind of you know going down the it's sci-fi you know I remember the best way best uh, kind of way I heard that was uh, with uh, Sid Mead I was watching one of his speeches live and uh, he said, oh, I'm making this car, you know, or I'm designing this thing, and it's made with unobtainium, and he used that term. And I don't know if he coined that term or not, because it's been used in, uh, in Avatar. So in the movie Avatar, they use that term. And again, I don't know if where the or origin of that term was, but uh, I heard it the first time when he said it, and I thought that was pretty funny. Because with, the, with concept design, I mean, a lot of stuff, you know, might not work in real life. Uh, most probably will not work in real life. So, um, so there is some stuff that needs to be kind of mysterious, but um, it still needs to be somewhat believable. 
and somewhat feasible. So you kind of have to do that work as a designer, as a concept designer. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, what am I doing? I'm starting to get foggy. All right, let's see here. Dynamic, Q grid of one. And by the way, there are faster ways of doing what I'm doing. I'm just, um, like if I did it before and then separated out, it might have been a better way to, to do it, but that's fine. It's, it's not really too bad. All right. Damon, uh, uh, welcome for the answer. Sure thing. Um, Oh, okay, so you were asking about the Disco Diffusion thing. Good, all right, yeah. Yeah, this Disco Diffusion is pretty amazing. It really is, yeah. All right, Dynamesh, no, not Dynamesh, Dynamic. So if we look at these arms, probably the one that's going to do the heaviest lifting is this one right here, the, the one in the bottom. Uh, this kind of curvy one is going to do the most heavy lifting. These ones are just to kind of adjust it. And uh, a lot of times I get a lot of inspiration on mechs from insects. And uh, because, I mean, if you look at insects, they're the only things that are kind of you know, that are not as anatomically equivalent to human beings. Like animals usually have similar anatomy to humans, at least most of them do. And um, the bone structure is the same, although the distribution is different. However, with insects, it's a whole other story. So I get a lot of inspiration for mechs from insects. Like this one, we were talking about um, an octopus kind of being the inspiration for it, some sort of an octopus. So, uh, yeah. Insects are pretty amazing. Spiders, this could be also a spider could be an inspiration for this as well. So either a spider or a octopus, I don't know. I'll have to figure out the name next time. I'll have it. I'll have to do some research. Okay. All right. This is looking good. Let's move on to this one. So this one we did before, but to make it a little bit bigger. All right. Still getting a little bit of a cramp here in my hand. Uh, let's take a bit of a break. Yeah, I, I really like the silhouette from the top. It's gonna be, I'm, I'm going to adjust these arms a little bit to have them be asymmetrical, but not much, just because I really like kind of the uh, gesture that they have, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see this thing finish too. See, the thing with AI is I've got this image and it's awesome. It's really beautiful, but it's from one angle. And I, I've been experimenting trying to see if I can generate the same image from a different angle and it won't do it, right? So there's no way I can tell the AI that I want to look at this, but I want to look at it from the bottom. Uh, right now, it won't do it. So if I'm going to do that, I, I would actually need to make it. And that's what I'm doing. So now I can look at it from that angle, which is like about there, but I can also look at it from the bottom. I can look at it from any angle, and that's kind of the power of actually making it and modeling it. The power of 3D concept design versus 2D concept design. Like I can see this being a 2D concept design on a ref board and uh, a, a director saying, make it look like this, but um, 
it's going to be interesting to see what the result of this is going to be, uh, you know, because this is the first time I've actually looked at AI and said, okay, I'm going to make whatever is in the AI and see if I can get it to uh, be a good convincing look. All right, so we're getting pretty close here to um, the time, um, but I will go a little bit over today. All right, so let's see. Uh, so if you want a large render, you increase the document size. Part always, okay, yeah, yes, definitely. Uh, you old man, that's right. Uh, the document size is basically the pixel size, right? So the document size here is how many pixels by how many pixels. Uh, so this one is 2,628 by 1680. That's it. So the maximum that ZBrush can go, go to is 8K by 8K. Uh, I'm not going to do that, of course, but I think that's the maximum size you can get out of here which is pretty, it's pretty big. Uh, but notice here that if you do make your document that size, right, you're not gonna be able to work in that size because it's just gonna be a lot of stuff that ZBrush has to do. So I would change it to this size when I'm going to go ahead and print. Uh, and what I mean print is not 3D print, but you know, uh, generate an image that's going to be printed on a printer, uh, a 2D printer uh, picture, right? So, all right. Okay, so all this work that I wanted to do with these legs uh, offline, I kind of ended up doing online, but uh, it's good. We got it done. Uh, let's take a look at what this is looking like now. It's looking pretty awesome. All right. Yeah, so you can see this kind of jarbled mess that it's got over here, right? We don't have that, but we have uh, something that we interpreted this to be. Another thing I also might want to do here is, um, let me bring this up and make it bigger. Like another thing I might want to do here is uh, maybe have like some cables and stuff dangling down and we'll see about that. I also like this other gesture of this kind of thing coming this way from the balloon. So, you know, we've got a lot to play with here, but what's cool is that all of this is interpretive. We just basically are... Uh, we don't know why, why the AI did all this, but what we're doing is trying to make sense of it and trying to generate something that would work uh, in that space. All right, so this is starting to look pretty good. Um, let's bring up the balloons here and see what else we can do. Oh, by the way, <laughs> it's so funny. In my class that I'm teaching, uh, I um, was teaching this one section. I totally forgot that I could do the balloons another way. And I guess I'll do that here too. Uh, I, I just want to see if it would work better. Uh, and that's by using the mask uh, mesh balloon feature. What's going on here? How come this is... That's weird. Huh. This brush is being covered by this, and I don't know if that's something that I did, or I don't know how that happened. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... So here, I'm going to use the uh, mask, mask balloon and try and make the balloons this way. And this is pretty cool. <laughs> right? So this is kind of a whole other way of making the balloons. And I uh, totally forgot about this feature uh, in ZBrush. Yep, that's what I want. in which you can just kind of draw out the balloon itself like this. And it'll make it for you. <laughs> How cool is that? And of course, um, you know, it, this is pretty well done. And then once that's done, uh, you can just go in and um, duplicate it and, uh, or I mean, separate it out from what was there before. So right now this is basically all part of one mesh, but you can separate this out and then um, I guess it's, it's part of this one, separate it out and then use dynamics on it. So that's a whole other way I could generate balloons and I totally had forgotten about the, this capability. Uh, glad I remembered it. All right, let's see what else we can do today on this. Um, maybe let's work on this part right here. Uh, Yeah, no, I, I never I never thought, I mean, like, I've seen AI programs before, uh, Dorema, um, and even though their, their um, results were interesting, 
I never really thought, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, I used Wombo, for example. Wombo is pretty neat, uh, but it generates very dreamlike stuff, and, uh, you know, it's it's cool. But I never thought, like, wow, this is something that I'm going to use as inspiration. But Disco Diffusion did it for me. That's the thing that I'm like, okay, now we're in business. Now this is feasible. And I can't wait until the next one. I think there's another one, Dolly, I think it's called, um, which is like Wally and uh, Salvador Dolly, I guess. And I'm on the beta for it, uh, or I'm I'm not on it, on the beta, but I'm uh, signed up for it. So soon they will probably give me some sort of account to try it out. And uh, that seems to be, um, on paper, producing some really interesting things, where it's actually producing exactly what um, you type in uh, and rendering it in a, in, a, in a very nice way. So I'm just really curious to see what that's going to look like once it is available to the public because right now it could just be smoke and mirrors uh, they're saying it can do this but there's no way you can test it or see uh, but as soon as we can I'll be able to judge whether or not that's going to be a player uh, in the arena or if it's just another kind of um, thing that's going to go away um, all right uh, let's see do I, do I know how to add real-time HDR lighting to the project scene? There is. It's not. Um, it's not really. Uh, it's not really like adding HDRI in like Keyshot or something like that or a renderer. But there is a way you can add HDRI uh, or HDR lighting in ZBrush. Uh, it does produce interesting results and it is real-time. See if I can remember how to do it. All right, let me quick save this first, and then we can uh, try it out. Um, any mecha anime uh, or movies I can recommend? Oh, quite a few. Quite a few. I actually, um, for my course that I teach, I did a whole slide on, on different ones. So uh, let, me, let me do this HDRI thing first, um, and then we'll do, we'll do that. So here, right now, this is being lit by one light, which is over here in the center, right? I'm just using matcap gray, or actually, I'm not even lighting it. I'm just using matcap gray. But if I j bump to basic material here, it's just being lit by one light. However, in the lighting menu here, you can choose an environment map. So here I'm just going to go, and right now, it's just using the default diffuse as the environment map. So I can go in and I can pick this one right here, right? So that's going to be the environment map that's on, and uh, default specular is this. And I think what you could do here is you could go to, where was it? Let me see if I can